Everything, everything is good. They've got a Call to order. This is the 11th regular meeting of the 2011-2012 Common Council. And as is customary, our city clerk, Sue Richards, will read the quote of the evening. Thank you, Mayor. When all things are said and done, we realize that life is not always as we planned, but we are required to do the best that we can with situations at hand. Thank you, Sue. Roll call, please. Belt. Here. Warren. Here. Carlson. Here. Decker. Here. Hammond. Here. I'm sorry, Hammond. Here. And then Hammond. Here. Heidemann. Here. Koth. Here. Kittleson. Here. Matichuk. Here. Rinfleisch. Here. Raisler. Here. Sampson. Here. Van Akron. Here. Vanderweel. Here. And Versi. Here. 16 present. We have a quorum now. If we can all stand and join Alderman Hammond in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Don. Looking for approval of the minutes of the prior Common Council meeting, President Rinfleisch. Thank you. I move that we approve the previous minutes. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes from the previous meeting. Under discussion? If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Resignations, Attorney McLean. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the first one is from Heather Cleveland advising that uh, we must resign from the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force effective immediately and that she's beginning graduate school in the Milwaukee area and moving down there to reduce the commute. Okay, we are looking for a motion on that. President Rinfleisch? I move that we accept the resignation. Second. Motion to accept and file. Under discussion? There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Attorney McLean. And there's a letter from Stephen R. Hemsing, uh, dated August 22nd, to the mayor advising that he's going to be spending the majority of the upcoming winter months in Florida and is therefore resigning as a member of the Plan Commission as of September 1. Do we have a motion? President Rinfleisch. Thank you. I move to accept the resignation and file a document. Second. We have a motion to accept and file under discussion. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <coughs> uh, Mr. Hemsing is a constituent of uh, Alderman Heidemann and myself. And uh, Mr. Hemsing goes all the way back uh, on this committee to uh, being appointed by Mayor Perez and then reappointed by yourself, Mayor Ryan. And I just want to thank uh, Mr. Hemsing for his dedicated, dedicated service on the Plan Commission. Uh, I know he was uh, always at the meetings when he could be. And we appreciate him stepping forward and being part of city government. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. I concur. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. All in favor of accepting and filing, state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. It's all for resignations, mayor's appointments, Attorney McLean. Honorable members of the council, I hereby submit the following appointment for your consideration. Greg Ryan to be considered for appointment to the Sustainable Sheboygan Task Force to fill the unexpired position of Heather Cleveland, whose term expires 4-23-2012, signed by the mayor. Thank you, Steve. I will make clear that Greg Ryan is no relation of mine at this point. Um, do we have, and all of you have a short bio on Mr. Ryan along with the letter of appointment. And that lies over. Thank you. Any further appointments? Okay. Public forum. Sue? Thank you. Um, do we have Pat Aholm? just a little bit. And Pat, can I get your home address, please? 2602A Camelot Boulevard. I think I got it. <laughs> Camelot Boulevard. Boulevard, yeah. And you will have five minutes. Thank you. Good evening. 
Um, I had a prepared speech written that I was practicing all afternoon, but at 6 o'clock I decided I would just kind of go from the heart, so I hope I don't fall apart and mess it up too much. Um, I actually voted for Bob Ryan in the spring of 2009, and when I did that, I obviously did not know about his background, and since that time I have been very disappointed that I did vote that way. Um, we have a bunch of different things coming forth tonight that I think kind of muddies the water or makes it more difficult than it should be to move along the process. Um, the one th resolution that's coming forth tonight is the one that was passed by the majority at the Committee of the Whole meeting. And that was the one stating that we should hire attorney Steve Biskupic from Michael Best and Friedrich. He's an excellent attorney with a wonderful reputation, and we obviously couldn't get him at a better price than pro bono. Now, I'm sure he would not even um, volunteer to do a job like this pro bono unless he was expecting very good results. Um, I think, first of all, that for the people that think we should have a recall election to give the people their own vote, that is not necessary because the people have voted you older persons into office to represent us and it is your job to take that seriously and anybody that would vote in a recall election can also pick up the phone call you and talk to you personally and give them your opinion or send you an email so you're getting the same feedback as if people would go to the poll and vote and this is your opportunity and really your responsibility to look out for the city of Sheboygan and its residents. Um, the other resolutions coming in tonight, um, the ones that basically forgive Mayor Ryan for all of these little public relations things that have been coming up and disturbing the city regular business. Um, a city administrator might be a good idea at some point but this is not the time to be talking about that. Um, I believe those are resolutions that were put together in haste and didn't carefully think things through, and I think that's a major step and really needs to be dealt with in a more careful manner. So that brings us back to the one resolution tonight that the Committee of the Whole passed as a majority and said we should consider that tonight. Um, because of the fact that Attorney Biskupic is going to investigate the matter first and decide whether there actually is enough evidence um, to show that we do have cause to go on with a quasi-judicial hearing. For one thing, we have no reason to pay out another attorney on the behalf of the council to advise him until we know that, yes, this is going to go forward as a quasi-judicial hearing. And if Attorney Biskupic comes back and says, no, there's not enough evidence, it doesn't pay to go forth, well then, Attorney, then um, Mayor Ryan has already won and he will remain in office. So actually, by putting forth this resolution to hire Attorney Stephen Biskupic, everyone should be satisfied by just this one action. If there's not enough, we're gonna know that right away. Mayor Ryan will stay on. If there is enough, it will go forward, and at that point, you can hire Attorney Velker to um, assist you. And um, I think that would be the best way overall to handle the matter because we're getting it for free. Um, if it gets to the point where we do have the quasi-judicial hearing, for one thing, um, I would sort of doubt that Mayor Ryan would actually want to go forward. He still has the opportunity to resign at any point. And considering that one week of depositions in the Angela Payne case kind of stressed him out and put him into the drinking weekend, I would think that he would want to carefully consider going through with a quasi-judicial hearing. Because at that hearing, he will be put under oath um, witnesses will be called and subpoenaed, and they will have to answer under oath. So there's going to be a lot of things coming out at that point that we don't now know about, and it's going to be very stressful, and I would think would tax um, Mayor Ryan's fight 
for sobriety at this point. So I would suggest that Excuse on behalf me, of all the citizens of Sheboygan. Excuse me, Pat, would you like your extra minute? Yes, please. Move to approve. Second. I would suggest that you um, put aside the recall action, put aside this other resolution to um, make James Amadio the chief administrator. And I think you should just concentrate on the resolution that was brought before you tonight, the one that, that has passed the Committee of the Whole. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Next. Uh, Patrick Gillette. Pat, can I have your home address, please? My home address is 915 North Avenue, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. And you will have five minutes, sir. Thank you. Mr. Mayor and common council members, uh, I just saved 30 minutes out of my talk tonight. Uh, my predecessor speaker stole my thunder. <laughs> but what I would like to emphasize is some of the things she didn't speak about. All of the issues she talked with deal with the incontinence of this city government. You're all to blame. Neither the mayor nor this council can man up and accept their responsibilities. She talked about that. The mayors used threats and illusions to disrupt what was once a strong direction that this council chose to take. Most of the council agenda tonight and subsequently most of the discussion tonight all will center on the fact that most people do not want Bob Ryan as Sheboygan's mayor. However, the mayor has not been the only delinquent in this elementary sandbox. You, the council, have been delinquent in carrying out the process that you started. A process that complies with the state statute, the Municipal Code of the City of Sheboygan, as well as the City and State Code of Ethics, all of which you took an oath to uphold. Now is not the time to offer illusions and delusions diversions from the path you chose to take originally. Now is the time to support and proceed with your initial commitment and official duties. You have a committed prosecutor that has agreed to work for free. You have a prima facie case to remove the mayor for cause. You have judicial notice of the municipal code, the code of ethics, and the state statutes. In all circuit courts, of this state, including the Court of Appeals and the state Supreme Court. Now, for those of you that don't know what judicial notice is, is the municipal codes, state statutes, are ipso facto recognized with judicial notice. The only real cost concerning proceeding with the removal process will be due to the incontinence of this council, the failure to hold its water you will then have failed your sworn duties. The removal process now is a civil matter, but all public officials subject are subject to misconduct in public office. No one is immune from actions or inactions as sworn public officials. Stop this four ring circus. Get back on track. Let the removal process continue. Thank you. Thank you, Pat. Next. Uh, let's see, next would be John Berner. John, can I have your home address, please? 1919 Broadway. Say it again. 1919 Broadway. And you will have five minutes, sir. All righty. I can't use big terms like these other people have used. I'm just a common, ordinary person. I think Sheboygan's water has been muddied for a long time. What I don't understand is Bob Ryan admitted to it. He said he is an alcoholic. He fell down after the first time. 
And for alcoholic, it's hard to do to get back up. But what I like to know is how somebody with a camera twice can take pictures and get it to the news so fast. And so you can watch it on TV the next night. This is what I don't understand. Was the council members ever given this before the news media? That I don't know. But it's just funny. I mean, I mean, it's the person with the camera. You really want to get something, give it to the news, go around, find out how many drug houses, start taking pictures, and get the police and the city involved in this. This is a minor thing. Anybody on this council hasn't said anything that the mayor hasn't done right. Anything that he hasn't helped the city with, except for this little episode, which isn't little. To you people it is. To him it's not little anymore. And I think he deserves that chance. Unless you can prove anything, anything he's done to the city, other than this, to hurt it, but put it ahead. Everybody deserves a chance. You on a council, I mean, it's, it's always been known that council members can't say something bad against other council members, but the last time somebody had an opinion to the mayor, I think that person was the mayor of apology. The mayor has apologized for his actions over and over. Uh, what do you want him to do, carry a cross? Drag it down the street? What he's got to go through isn't easy. And I don't think any of you people in this common council has ever gone through it. It's not an easy thing. I've seen it, and I've been through it. Trust me. It isn't easy. I thank you. Thank you, John. Next. Um, Mike Vandersteen. <coughs> Put it in reverse, Mike. Yep. Mm-hmm. Michael? I need Mayor Ryan, name. members of the Common Council. Michael, can I get your home address first? Oh, 320 Lincoln Avenue. 321 Lincoln? 320. Mayor Five Ryan minutes. and members of the Common Council, clerk and, and city attorney. I'm here tonight as a regular citizen who's been a 25, I mean, a longtime member of the Sheboygan JCs, and telling you a little bit about the JC Cross Country Ski Program. You've got a, a map that we handed out earlier, and um, the reason I'm here is because I thought there was going to be something on your agenda about the Rotary Christmas Lights Project. Both good projects, uh, and actually I'm a member of both of those clubs, so it, it kind of tears me apart. But the Rotary Lights Project is projected to start in 2012, and uh, there's been some talk of this in the Public Works Committee and the Park Board. The project, if it was implemented, would seriously impact the ability of citizens to use the ski trail during the early part of the season. During the early part of the season, we also build base so that we have snow to ski on for the rest of the year. And if it was scraped off, we wouldn't have any snow there to start with. Whenever the project got done and cleaned out of the park, probably early in January, uh, that's when we would start to build base. And then many times we get a February thaw and our season's over with already. So uh, these two conflict with each other, and uh, Evergreen Park is the hub of this trail. It's the lit loop that gets the most evening skiing, and it's the only way to get to Maywood from a parking lot if you're a skier. Now, while there's been some discussions with city staff and the JC Groomers and the Rotary, the JC Groomers and the citizens that use the ski trail were not made aware of any of these discussions when they came up at Public Works or the uh, Park Board. Uh, I think that these concerns about the ski trail should be properly aired before you make a decision on this. Now, if we've had the rights to use it during December long enough, well, then so be it. But I still think that we have a right to, to have those aired in front of those committees before they make their decision on this. Um, the city doesn't have to say yes to Rotary's project in order for it to happen. They've talked to Randy out at the bid district, and, and Randy has been open to them in, in talking about trying to house this at South Pier. 
They've also talked to Al Hardison at UWS, and he uh, had a, a lights project like this with a service club where he came from in another community, and he would love to have it out there. So there are other places for it to go. The city doesn't have to agree to put it at Evergreen Park where it's going to conflict with cross-country ski trail users. This project uh, is not set to start till 2012, so I'd ask that um, you pull this back and ask for some reconsideration. Now, uh, tonight when I talk to Clerk Richards, I find out that on 726, Public Works voted uh, in favor of recommending this and referred it to Park and Forestry. And on 8-2, Park and Forestry approved the request. But as I remember, when I was an alderman, Park and Forestry doesn't have the right to make any decisions. They're advisory only. And if Public Works is going to refer it, they should refer it to Park and Forestry, ask for a recommendation, take that recommendation, and then make a decision. And then it should be coming back to this full council for final action. So I hope that you can work to overcome the, uh, the procedures on this, that uh, we can have it brought up in one of these committees and discuss the concerns of the ski trail groups and bring it back here for final action. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks, Michael. Thank you, Mike. Next. That's it. Okay, that is all for public forum. On to my favorite part of the evening, the mayor's announcements. Always my favorite. Um, we have a rather lengthy agenda this evening, so I will keep it brief. A uh, couple of announcements. Uh, first of all, the next council meeting, we will hold an election for the Board of Water Commissioners. Uh, interested parties, uh, there is one uh, seat uh, on the, the Board of Water Commissioners uh, up for election. The incumbent will run, but any interested parties uh, that are interested in, in assuming that position uh, can send a letter to uh, our city clerk, Sue Richards, or to President Rinfleisch uh, regarding that. Um, moving on, uh, our fire department is <coughs> helping to raise money uh, for the Fire Department of New York Widows and Children's Fund. Um, they have these 9-11 shirts, which this is mine, um, which we will be willing, wearing at City Hall and many businesses around town on Friday. Pretty cool shirts. Uh, all the proceeds of these goes, goes to the uh, FDNY Widows and Children's Fund, and the, so far they've raised approximately $6,000 uh, for that fund. Uh, these are $15. Uh, if you require a double X, L or more, I think they're an extra two or three bucks. Extra five dollars, according to Alderman Hammond. Now, if you get an extra small, you don't get a discount, but that's, I guess, the way it Not works. I had to get a double X. Um, they are available at, at uh, Firehouse Number 1, which is right behind City Hall here. Uh, they have a limited amount right now, but they are going to possibly be taking, uh, if they get a large demand, they've already gone through several hundred. If they get a large demand, they will order more. So that is uh, that. We have a couple... Uh, uh, big events coming up in the city. Um, one thing, uh, we have an Erie Hill neighborhood meeting uh, this Saturday, September 10th at 1230 p.m. Erie Hill is the neighborhood, of course, uh, up the hill on Erie Avenue, which would be west of our present Gateway neighborhood. Uh, it will be at the church at North 15th and St. Clair. I don't have the name of that church here, uh, but this will be for establishing the neighborhood association. So especially aldermen that are involved in the Erie Hill neighborhood, uh, that that is their district, uh, they, they please attend. And anybody else who is interested, I know Alderperson Kittleson is, uh, mm -hmm. is very instrumental in, in the neighborhood associations. And I believe Alderperson Koth, I've seen at many of them also. So, and Alderman Sampson, of course. But uh, that is uh, for there. Um, next weekend, uh, not this coming weekend, but uh, the next weekend beginning actually next uh, week from Today, Tuesday, September 13th, uh, we have the Nations Cup coming to the city of Sheboygan. Nations Cup is uh, the second biggest boating event in the world uh, behind the America's Cup. This is being held in Sheboygan. Sheboygan is one of uh, four U.S. sailing centers in the country. I don't know if everybody knows this. Uh, you have Long Beach, you have Miami, you have San Diego, and you have Sheboygan. Uh, we are a U.S. sailing center. Uh, we will have 20 teams from 20 countries that will co be competing. Uh, Tuesday night is the uh, grand uh, opening ceremonies uh, featuring the U.S. Navy, Navy Band. 
Uh, they will have a uh, low fireworks presentation um, held on the east lawn of the uh, um, Blue Harbor Resort. Uh, Wednesday is the Big Brat Fry, sponsored by Johnsonville and Festival Foods. Uh, Festival Foods is also the fireworks sponsor for this. We welcome them to our community. Um, and uh, they will have uh, da -da -da -da, concessions, uh, band playing from uh, 6 to 9. I have the bands coming up here. Uh, Thursday, September 15th is the Taste of Sheboygan on A Street. Going to close down a big portion of A Street. Uh, Taste of Sheboygan will have uh, 15 different food sampling stations, all local restaurants, uh, food fr price from a buck to five bucks, and for those who partake, there is beer and wine and soft drinks. Um, they will have uh, some uh, uh, bands out there, including uh, Daryl Sturmer, former Genesis guy from Milwaukee, uh, Joel Keither. Uh, they'll have uh, several other bands going, and they're basically bands every night. So the Taste of Sheboygan will be on Thursday. Friday is the South Pier Carnival over on South Pier. Also more bands on Friday. Um, Saturday, we're going to have some tall ships in town. Uh, tall ships will be able to, uh, you'll be able to buy tickets right at the docks, take the tall ships out to the race course itself. Uh, they will have commentary over the uh, PAs on the ships of who's in, you know, of, of how the race is going, who's in first place and what's happening. Most of us don't understand match racing. I know I don't, so it'll be a, a lesson for me to learn. Um, tickets are sold on site. Saturday, Saturday evening uh, is going to be a uh, rather large fireworks demonstration Saturday night. Several bands uh, out on uh, the South Pier area. Um, it's an all-day event. It'll be a big event. It's kind of like taking a summertime event and putting it in the uh, middle of September in Sheboygan. Um, and then on Sunday is the closing ceremonies. Like I said, this is uh, Tuesday through Sunday. Uh, a lot of stuff going on. Um, some of the bands they are going to have will include, uh, let's see, Wednesday I said Joel Keither, uh, Friday is uh, Spare Time, uh, play a lot of Eagles, Pink Floyd, stuff like that for you uh, folks my age out there in the crowd. Uh, Saturday is Loxley Sunday Strawberry Jam Band, uh, those will all be down on South Pier. Um, be a great event. Uh, the governor has proclaimed uh, that this uh, coming week, Nations Cup Week, statewide. Um, don't know if uh, Mr. Walker is going to make an appearance or not. Um, and uh, just a bit of good news on the end of this. Uh, we got some numbers on our tax dollars, our, uh, which uh, drives tourism in the city. Uh, the first quarter of 2011, our um, income on city room tax dollars and hotel rooms is up 14% over last year, and the second quarter is up 10%. So we must be doing something right. Our tourism numbers are going up. So that's the good news. I hope everybody, uh, the public, and especially the aldermen, can get out for some of these events and uh, support our community. Um, moving on, uh, we do have a rather lengthy agenda tonight. I believe there's going to be a couple items pulled forward for the sake of the media. Um, we have some big decisions to make tonight on a couple of different issues. I am not going to um, voice my opinion that greatly as I did in the past. And I apologize if I sounded rather gruff the last meeting. I let my emotions get a hold of me. I think it's time that we move forward, um, that we do the right thing, that we put our emotions aside and that we do what is good for the city. The city being the citizens of the city and the overall good of the city. And with that, we will move on um, to the public hearings, which I will call first before we anything else we have three hearings this evening three hearings uh, hearing number one for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacement in Broadway from South 13th Street to South 14th Street hearing number two for the proposed assessments for water lateral replacement in South 13th Street from south of Indiana Avenue to Broadway Avenue and number three for the proposed assessment for water main installation in Eisner Avenue, 150 feet east of, Halbert's, of Hubert's Circle to Lakeshore Road. Is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding these three hearings, any one of them? If you would, uh, please raise your hand and step forward. Going twice, is there anybody that would like to be heard? And three times, is there anybody that would like to be heard regarding these hearings? There is not, President Rinflesh. 
Uh, thank you. I move that the hearings be closed. Second. We have a motion and a second to close the hearings. Under discussion? All eyes. Mm -hmm. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearings are closed. Consent agenda? President Rinfleisch. Thank you. I move uh, from documents 11.1 to 11.9 that all report of officers be accepted and placed on file and all resolutions be put upon their passage. We have a motion and a second under discussion on the consent agenda. If there is no discussion. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Manichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Reports of officers 2, 11, 10. Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, in the interest of obviously our friends in the media here, would like to pull forward document 1158. Okay, we have a motion to pull forward document number 1158. 1158 being a resolution by Alderman Hammond and Raisler establishing the position of Chief Administrative Officer <coughs> of the City of Sheboygan. Motion to second on pulling it forward. Under discussion on pulling it forward only. Pulling it forward. Alderman Boren, did you have a? No, nothing. Alderperson Kittleson on pulling the item forward. Thank you, Mayor. I guess on pulling it forward, I would ask that we refer this document to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, first we're pulling it Pull forward. forward. Discussion right. only on pulling it forward. Is there anybody opposed to the document being pulled forward? Okay, it is pulled forward under discussion. On the document, Alderman Hammond. Go ahead. Not sure if my it's your document was. if you'd like to. I would. Um, I would move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put it on its upon its passage. Now under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, again, one of the things just for the interest of those at home, this is just a resolution establishing the position. This is not putting the person into the position. This isn't creating the ordinances. It's just taking that first step of creating the, um, the position. Um, the ordinances will be, uh, according to the other items, will be referred to salaries and grievances. I have no problem if they want to forward those to the uh, Committee of the Whole as well. Um, but I would hope that we could pass this resolution um, to at least create the position so we could keep moving forward um, with um, those other documents. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderperson Kittleson, please. Thank you, Mayor. I, I guess uh, that being said, um, I still feel that um, it would be a good idea for us to refer this document along with the, the th three others, 1162, 63, and 64, to the Committee of, whole, of the Whole, simply for all of us to have a, a chance to uh, uh, talk about them. Um, I, I feel that uh, each of us should have a chance to weigh in on um, what's being said here, what's being offered. Um, uh, I don't think that there has been enough discussion with all of us on to act to what actually is, is going on here. Well, thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Um, 62, 3, and 4 presently are um, scheduled to go to salary and grievances when those come up. Um, I'm, I'm sure the motion can be made to refer those to the Committee of the Whole also. Uh, basically, what we're discussing right now is referring 1158 to the Committee of the Whole. That is the discussion at this point. Alderman Boren, on, re on referral to Committee of the Whole or on passage. It's, we have a motion to refer to the Committee of the Whole in a second. No. No, we don't motion have a motion. To a motion to we accept the, res or pass the resolution. Pass the resolution. Motion is to pass the resolution. Okay. Okay. On discussion of passing the resolution, <coughs> please, Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <coughs> uh, I support the concept of a chief financial officer or a city administrator, and, uh, but I will, not, I will not support this document calling for a chief administrative officer. Uh, I, I agree with Alderperson Kittleson that the whole matter, whether it be a chief administrative officer or we end up calling it a city administrator, should go to the Committee of the Whole first for consideration. I appreciate the work that Alderman Hammond and Alderman Raisler did on this document, but I won't support it because 
I don't think we, I think we should have further discussion on what we actually end up with with the title of the officer, whether it be chief administrative officer or city administrator. So uh, I won't support this document, but however, I will support sending it to the committee of the whole. Thank you. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Uh, thank you. Um, to, the, uh, to Alderman Bourne's point, um, the primary reason I put in the chief administrative officer title, um, call the city administrator, you know, I don't want to get hung up with semantics on this one, but is to start to formulate a more of a business atmosphere inside City Hall. Um, part of this process would also, as many of you know, be restructuring, um, changing titles, again, to foster more of an atmosphere of business. Um, to kind of echo what's going on in Madison that we're open for business. And I think by changing the titles, it also starts to change the mindset inside Teddy Hall that we are to operate as a business and we are here um, as a business and we have customers which are, you know, our constituents. So that's the reason behind it. Nothing more, nothing less. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Bourne, once again, please. Thank you. And I, I agree with the, the concept that Alderman Hammond said. However, I think that the uh, an ex excellent place for this to start would be the Committee of the Whole, and I would, I would have a Committee of the Whole meeting on this item and any other items that may be referred tonight regarding this. I would have that on uh, Wednesday, September 21st. I already have a meeting, I'm going to be having a meeting scheduled for September 14th on some things that Chad Pelichek wants to bring to the Committee of the Whole's attention from development. And that's going to be a full evening. So I, I can't get this in on the 14th, or we'd be here all night, or there all night. But I plan on doing this and any other documents regarding city administrator, chief administrative officer on the 21st, and have a full discussion and dedicate the meeting to that only and have a public forum for anybody that wants to weigh in on this issue from the public also. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. We've heard from two aldermen uh, wanting to refer this to the Committee of the Whole. Um, Alder Alderman Van Akron, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would agree, and uh, I would like to, to see this referred to the Committee of the Whole as well, just to give everyone here a chance to ask the, the questions and get the information, but as, a, as well as the citizens of Sheboygan to come and get that, in, uh, get that information and a chance to give their input as well. I think we should take our time with this. This is a major change to city government and how we're going to be operating. And I think all of us need a better chance to fully understand it and fully grasp what's all involved in this. So I, I too, would support a motion to uh, refer this to the Committee of the Whole. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. President Rinfleisch. Thank you. Um, everyone knows I've been an uh, advocate for city administrator for quite some time. I call it city administrator, chief administrative officer, chief operations officer. I don't really care. For me, it is to bring in professional management within the workings of the city. Um, professional management, either from a background experience, uh, from a business experience, or from government experience. Um, we've been so close before, and it's never happened. We have a document in front of us that and all you really need to look at is the be it resolved. That's the resolution part of that. And it simply states that the position of chief administrative officer shall be created and appropriate actions be taken to establish the position effective October 1st. Um, I urge you to vote this today. We've been close before and I thought we had a majority in the past and it's, it's failed in the past. The appropriate actions can be discussed in the Committee of the Whole and I look forward to that meeting, uh, the various documents. Those can be amended in, in many different ways. Uh, to fit um, what we come up with within that full discussion. Uh, but I ask that, you know, we're so close, we have a document in front of us, let's move this document, and um, we can resolve all other issues in the Committee of the Whole and refer it back to the full Cabinet Council later on. So I support uh, taking action on this today. Okay, so the question is, do we take action on this today or do we refer this to the Committee of the Whole? Uh, can we take a vote on referring to the Committee of the Whole? Needs to be a motion. Put forth a motion. Um, we have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Uh, we end a second. Um, now, obviously, if the document is voted down upon its passage, um, it will die at this point. Um, we could have a motion to refer it to the Committee of the Whole, or if, if somebody would like to make that motion, or we can vote on putting it upon its passage. Alder Person Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I, you know, I'm looking at here, uh, 
Alderman Rindfleisch has stated here, be it resolved that the position of Chief Administra Administrative Officer shall be created and appropriate actions be taken to establish the position effective October 1st. I guess the Chief Administrative Officer, are we, do we know is it city manager, is it city, is it city administrator? I guess that's the discussion as well that I'm unsure of that should, should take place. Alderman Hammond, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Thank Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, to answer your question, Alderman Kittleson, it would be more in line with the city administrator. Mm -hmm. um, and again, to echo President Rinflish's comments, again, what this is doing is just establishing the position. Um, all of the rest, um, whether it's committee of the whole, salaries and grievances, um, to me doesn't matter, can be vetted out, but it just gives us the ability to take the next step. Um, and again, that's why we worded it um, that shall be created any appropriate actions to be taken so that we can make any amendments or changes necessary to, to take this through. But it would be modeled more like a city administrator type position. City man not Thank a city manager. You. Satisfied with that, all person Gittles? Um, may I? Well, Please, do. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. I guess, is that something we do want to discuss? <laughs> Again, at Committee of the Whole. Um, maybe that's something, if anyone else has questions on that, that, that we can have that open discussion at the Committee of the Whole meeting. Um, just to put that out there for everyone as well. How, I'm, I'm not certain how other aldermen are feeling on that, but um, because this came about so quickly, I, I feel that the full discussion just needs to take place before we rush into anything. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Uh, just a little bit of history. I did uh, present a table of organization uh, probably two years ago, um, establishing three positions in the city, one being a uh, director of operations, one being a director of administ administration, one being a director of development because we had people in those positions at that point. The only new position was the director of operations. Um, that was subsequently didn't fly with the council. I think it fell one vote short. Uh, since then, we've had some resolutions for city administrator, which I believe were all within one vote also. Uh, the way I see this right now, um, the way that uh, these documents are written, I am not opposed to having um, somebody in this position in the city. Um, I believe, you know, if the council wants to vet it out with, you know, exactly what it's called, uh, the title is semantics. I, I believe uh, Alderman Hammond's uh, uh, title of uh, chief administrative officer. Uh, let's face it, you know, we're trying to get this city more in line with the business world and operate it like a business. We have no choice because our revenues do not continually go up. Uh, so we have no choice but to do that. In principle, I do not disagree with this, in principle. So, you know, if that uh, helps anybody make their decision. Now, whether uh, right now we have a motion to put this upon its passage. We have no other motions, so I guess we're still discussing at this point putting this resolution upon its passage. And we have Alderman Boren again. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, I don't want to see this die tonight because I do see a, uh, I do support the concept, but I do want to have the discussion at the Committee of the Whole, and I, if this gets voted down tonight, then it's dead and somebody's going to have to bring it back again. I would, uh, if we get to some of these documents later, I think there's three more that pertain to this with more of the meat and potatoes of it. And I, before I'm prepared to vote on this tonight, uh, I would like to have the discussion at the, at the Committee of the Whole. I don't want it to see diet. I don't want to see a die tonight because I do, uh, approve the concept of a city ad administrative officer or a city administrator, but I think it needs much more discussion than just voting on this tonight. Thank you. Are you, are you making a motion? Well, I don't like to make a motion on my own committee, but if nobody else will, I will make well, a motion. That's right, you're the chairman. Probably. I will make a motion. Probably shouldn't. Wait, right. okay. Somebody else wants to make yep. the motion? Alderman Versi, you're right next door. Thank you. Um, for everyone to kind of make it real simple, this is just the position. This is not the job description. This has nothing else to do with that position. It's just authorizing us to create the position, which we have to do first before we can get the rest of these documents, the salary agreements, to go over the job description, who he reports to, and whatnot. This is just the position. So, I mean, this can be voted on tonight because it is just a position. It has nothing to go farther than the position being created. So, I am it's supporting this going through tonight. The documents are going through to the committee of the whole as well. Um, the substantial to hash it through again, but this is just the position again that we can go forward, move forward. Thanks. 
Thank you, Alderman Versi. Alderman Sampson, please. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, if we need a motion to move this to the Committee of the Whole, then I'll, I'll make that motion to move this to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, we have a motion to send to the Committee of the Whole. Do we have a second? We have a second from Alderman Belt. Okay, um, so the discussion is um, putting it upon its passage or moving it to the Committee of the Whole. Uh, we do have a motion on the Committee of the Whole. And uh, next we have Alderman Carlson. Yes, at the risk of um, beating a dead horse here, um, as Alderman Versi and Hammond has said, uh, we are simply creating the position, the, the name, it's all about semantics, whatever you want to call it. I, I, I still think it's important to pass this tonight and just talk about the specifics and the details of it at Community of the Whole. That's just my Thank take. you, Alderman Carlson. Alderman Van Akron, every time you hit your light, it goes on and off. It's probably the seat. I know Alderman, I, it very well could uh, Alderman be. Bowers used to do that all the time. <laughs> it very well could be. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Probably a faulty switch. Um, Please. I too support some of the ideas in here and I, I look forward to discussing them at length, um, but I do believe it needs to go to the Committee of the Whole just to discuss all the ideas. I guess also a point of order question for uh, City Attorney McLean, just like any other resolution bringing this in, if we were to act on this tonight, would we need to suspend the rules to move this forward? Wouldn't every other resolution be forwarded as well to some committee? I guess that's, that's my question. Uh, no, it's, it's on there uh, on the agenda properly. It does in and of itself, it doesn't require, it's not a contract, doesn't require uh, expenditure of funds or anything like that, so it could be passed tonight. Answer your question, Alderman Van Akron? Yes. Thank you. Alderman Heideman? Thank you, Mayor. Um, having been on the short end of the stick on uh, these votes for city administrators for what, two, three years? Uh, I'm going to support this only because I don't want to see it die. I want to see it at the Committee of the Whole. I want to be able to go through this process and make sure we got the right man, the right job, right, uh, right obligations. But uh, having lost, what, two, three votes on this already, I can't afford to see this go away. And uh, I'm going to be in favor of it. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Yeah, I lost both of mine by one vote, too, each way. So. Alderman Boren, one last time, maybe? Please. Well, I would, I would be... Uh, to compromise, I would be willing to go along with this tonight if I could make a friendly, friendly amendment, and that would be a resolution establishing the position of city administrative officer or city administrator to be, ter to be determined uh, at the Committee of the Whole. Or I'll, I'll leave out the Committee of the Whole. I'll just say a resolution. Uh, we, can, we, can work on the, we can work on the official title later, but I'm uncomfortable with calling it a city administrative officer. I've said before, I, I, I like the uh, uh, chief administrative officer. Uh, I like the concept, but and I don't want to get hung up on the name, but I think it's important uh, that we get it right. Thanks. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I feel like a yo-yo all of a sudden. Um, I would, I would uh, uh, accept your friendly amendment and uh, change it to a resolution established the position of chief administrator officer um, city administrator for the city of Sheboygan in the effort to move this forward um, and deal with the semantics at the committee of the whole so what is your amendment or your agreement on amendment just the chief administrative officer slash city administrator Very so good. we can have the conversation at the committee of the whole does that work for you alderman Bourne? yes it does okay um, so we have a friendly amendment calling it the Chief Administrative Officer slash City Administrator for the City of Sheboygan. Um, and we still have two motions out there, one to send it to the Committee of the Whole and one to put it upon its passage. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd call the question on putting it upon its passage. Okay, we're calling the question on putting the resolution upon its passage. Attorney McLean. <laughs> Under Robert's rules, a uh, motion to refer takes precedence, so you need to vote on the motion. To refer. I'd like to call the question on referring to Committee of the Whole. I would. Do we have a second on that? Second. All in favor of calling the question state aye. 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 Opposed? Question is called. Roll call, please. An aye vote will send this document to the Committee of the Whole. A no vote will not. Sue. Hold on. Okay. You got it. I vote would send it to Committee of the Whole. Okay. Carlson. No. 
Decker? Aye. Hammond? No. Hammond? No. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Matichak? No. Rinfleisch? No. Raisler? No. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? No. Versi? No. Belt? Aye. And Bourne? No. Four ayes, 12 noes. Motion fails. Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I call the question on passage. Second. Motion and a second on calling the question on putting the resolution upon its passage as amended. As amended. Under discussion. All those in favor of calling the question state aye. 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 Opposed? Question is called. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. <laughs> Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichak? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 15 ayes, 1 no. Motion carries. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, keeping the process moving along, I'd like to pull forward document um, 1159, please. Okay, 1159, a resolution by Alderman Hammond and Raisler terminating the removal proceedings by the Common Council against Mayor Ryan. Alderman Van Akron, you keep turning it on and off. Just hit Try. it one time. Um, okay, you're not on right now. Would you like to be? There you go. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I guess I would just ask that we pull documents 1159 through 1163 so we could deal with all of these right away, if that's possible. I didn't hear what you said. Um, 59 through 63. Okay, right now we, are, um, we had a resolution, a motion to pull forward 1159. Second. We have a motion and a second on 1159 being pulled forward. Is there anybody opposed to 1159 being pulled forward? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman Van Akron. If I can, I'd like to pull forward 1160 through 63 then as well, just so that we can take these all in order and, and get this done with. If that's, if that's Alderman possible. Hammond, please. Uh, thank you. Um, I think. Um, 62 and 63 are actually already going to be referred to committee of the whole. Those are the ordinances that deal with the creation of the, of the position we just approved. Um, 59, 60, and 61 deal with the, the matter um, come forward, so. You'd like to pull 60 and 61 forward, Alderman Van Akron? Yes, I would. We have a second on 60 and 61. Uh, they will be taken in order anyway. Second. Second to pull 60 and 61. Anybody opposed to 60 and 61 being pulled forward? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. Uh, we are back to, uh, we have 1159, 60, and 61 pulled forward. Uh, discussing 1159, Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put it upon its passage. Under discussion, Alderman Van Akron. Mr. Mayor, I guess I would like to call a point of order. Um, being that these obviously have to do with you, I guess I would question the uh, conflict of interest, obviously, with these matters. I, I certainly think it's inappropriate for you to preside over these um, three resolutions. So I, I certainly would ask you to recuse yourself from these three matters. I will recuse myself from voting on these three matters, if that satisfies you. Okay, under discussion on 1159, we have a motion and a second to put upon its passage under discussion. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, uh, gonna kind of read some prepared remarks regarding this, so uh, you know, forgive me for uh, this. But first, I'd like to acknowledge those individuals um, that came forward with complaints regarding the mayor's actions several weeks ago. Um, I believe um, their actions are to be commended in a city of almost 50,000 people, 
Um, only a few had the courage to come through with a formal complaint. And for again, again for that, I commend them um, and thank them for doing that. This has been a trying and stressful time for the city um, and this body in particular. However, now I believe it's time to move forward for the good of our city. There are many positive things happening in this city right now, especially from an economic development standpoint. And a lot of it, many on this council or even in the city may not be aware of. And from my standpoint, um, it'd be a shame to lose one job opportunity from a prospective business because we take this process um, to the nuclear option. Additionally, I think this body also needs to consider some of the collateral damage that could happen um, by taking this process even further. Um, first off, it'll be a huge distraction to the good work inside City Hall, and secondly, to the city's reputation going forward. There are some that believe by ending this process, the mayor wins. I could not disagree more with that, uh, with that assumption. Um, he agreed to submit to random testing, and the day-to-day -day operations will now be turned over um, possibly to a chief administrative officer slash city administrator that will report um, to the council. Additionally, as this body, we've taken, more, uh, we've, we've taken this process further than any other elected body has ever taken this process, um, at least in recent history. And I do believe now the mayor realizes the seriousness of his actions. Some will say that by ending this process, we're condoning the mayor's actions. Uh, hardly. This body has been very clear that the mayor's actions were indefensible and embarrassing to the city. And again, this body has taken unprecedented steps to make this point well known. Some contend we have an obligation to investigate the complaints filed by our fine citizens. However, we also have an obligation to protect the reputation of our city and to move this city forward. Again, this process will be a tremendous uh, distraction to this council and to the work going on inside, inside City Hall. We have a budget deficit to deal with, ongoing contract negotiations, and economic development opportunities to focus on. Some believe that this is a simple quasi-judicial hearing, and let's have an attorney do an investigation and report back to the findings of the report back to findings to the council. Anybody believes this process is going to be simple um, is, I, my opinion, not looking at this process objectively. We are in uncharted waters. This process could last for weeks or months. Nobody knows. Um, what we do know is that the good work of the city needs to continue, and this will be a huge distraction. As far as an investigation, I wonder what we'll find out that we already don't know. The details may get more sensational for our friends in the media. However, I'm not sure that we'll find out um, anything that we aren't already aware of, and again, the media circus will ensue. Finally, I'm not trying to let the mayor off the hook or sweep this under the rug. Um, any thought of that is absurd. Everybody in this council body knows that I have been one of the more open critics of his behavior on that weekend. Um, I've been one of the most vocal about his behavior and the one on this council that spoke out regarding um, his little um, comments to us, uh, indicating that I don't appreciate being lectured by the, the individual that created this mess. However, I believe we now need to move forward for the good of our city, not for the good of Bob Ryan, but for the good of our city. I know that many on the council are angry with the mayor's behavior. I'm not pleased with it either. However, this is the time to put the city first and move on. I believe we've made our point and we've taken our action, and now it's time to move over, move forward. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Riesler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Uh, obviously, I co-sponsored this uh, with Alderman Hammond. Uh, my, my charge is, again, the financial uh, obligation that we're going to incur from this. I, again. I warn you that there are many hidden costs out there that we are not going to be prepared for. Um, we have subpoena fees, witness fees, mileage, um, attorney fees uh, for the mayor, uh, depending upon what the end resolution is for that. And I'm, uh, again, hearing a lot of uh, financial uh, discussions that we obviously, with the deficit we have uh, for our upcoming budget, uh, cannot afford this. And again, I uh, support this, uh, again, mostly on the financial aspects. I do not um, uh, think that the actions that the mayor uh, took uh, initially were proper, uh, but again, you have to look at moving on and the financial uh, stability of the city. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Raisler. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, as much as I do appreciate the willingness for everybody to just want to move forward with this, uh, I, I, I certainly believe we have the obligation to complete the process of those two verified complaints to the city. Uh, we never had a chance to discuss with the attorneys that would possibly uh, represent us to tell us what those potential costs would be. We, we, we were taking that 
away from us last week when we had that opportunity. It's extremely disappointing that that did happen, that there were discussions going on with very few people, certainly not the, uh, not the council as a whole, uh, with coming up with this very nice, elaborate uh, conclusion. Um, I, I feel that it's been a disservice for us not to be able to discuss this with those attorneys, and I would like to see this complete or, or continue so we can. So then if there is those hidden fees, I'm certain that those attorneys would be more than happy to open up if we asked them, uh, are there any hidden fees? I'd like to see that, but if we don't get the chance to talk with the attorneys, we'll never know what fees are out there in the open or in secret. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Is there any further input? Alderman Bourne. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> uh, I agree with Alderman Sampson that I think we, we owe it to our constituents that came <coughs> forward with these complaints to go through and at least do the investigation. And I'm not here to do any mudslinging at all tonight, but uh, some of the comments that Alderman Hammond made, just the opposite could be true, that we, have, uh, we possibly have been disgraced already where prospective companies uh, that want to come into Sheboygan may not we be willing to do business with us if the mayor's in the chair. And that's all I'm going to say on that. I'm not going to get any, any, other, any other explanation other than that. Uh, the majority of people that I have talked to, my constituents, are for to go forward and at least do the investigation, find out if we have a case, and then we can make the decision. And I'm also, I agree with Alderman, uh, the Alderman that uh, our attorney is going to point out any particular hidden costs. Uh, he's prepared to do this pro bono, including the quasi-judicial hearing, uh, appeal all the way up the ladder of the courts. And I think we should at least take the opportunity to find out if we have a case. If we do, we move forward. And if we don't, mayor's, the mayor is going to be mayor for another 13 months. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Bourne. Alderman Van Eckren. Thank you, Mayor. I, uh, I agree with Alderman Bourne and Alderman Sampson that um, I, I do believe we have an obligation and a duty to go forward with investigating these allegations. Um, I take no joy in this matter. I don't think anyone here does. I don't think anyone has to be put in this situation. Um, it certainly is ugly. It certainly has been a large distraction to the city, and, and I'm disappointed that the city finds itself in this position. Um, but I do believe we have an obligation and a duty to the people that elected us to follow through with these type of investigations, just like we would with any other um, city employee. I don't think any other city employee would have a complaint like this brought against them and have the process end before it's at least investigated. I think we have an obligation to go through with the investigation. And if that time there's no merit and there's no grounds and it's unfounded, so be it. Um, the mayor himself has said that his actions will not meet grounds for removal. He should welcome an investigation to say exactly that. I think we need to go forward with this, especially at the cost of for free from the, our attorneys. Um, is there possibly a hidden cost if we go further than the investigation? There is possibly. Um, but I, I think we have to investigate this matter to at least find out what we are going to stop. I mean, at this point, we are dealing with accusations, rumors, and allegations that the mayor said won't meet the level for removal, well, I think we need to find out. I think that's our duty, that's our obligation. I think we are elected to make those hard decisions and people depend on us to do that. I think we need to go forward with this process. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Any further discussion? President Rindfleisch. Thank you. Um, everybody in this council chambers knows how sick I've been of this whole process. Um, not something I asked for when I uh, ran for this position as president of the council, but it's one I accept uh, freely. Um, the role of the president is to represent as best as one can, all 16 members, to reach consensus, uh, reach agreements, and move forward um, as best as we can. It's been a struggle, certainly, in the last uh, 40 days or so. Uh, and so if uh, anybody finds fault, I apologize, uh, simply. Uh, doing what I felt is right, feels right uh, as we go forward. I got an interesting phone call today on the way uh, here. I was not able to answer the phone. Uh, they did leave a voice message. And the voice message was uh, from a constituent who had said uh, that she thanked me for sticking to my principles. She didn't say what she felt my principles were, just thanked me for sticking to them. And it did force myself to ask, what are my principles uh, in coming in today? Um, and it's always been to do what I feel is best for the city. 
Uh, nothing more, nothing less. Uh, as we sat down, I looked at Sue's uh, quote of the day. And if I may paraphrase just a little bit, when all things are said and done, um, life is not always as we plan, but required to do the best that we can with the situation at hand. Well, what is the situation at hand? We find ourselves where we are because of the actions taken in Elkhart Lake, the embarrassment caused to the city, the requests for his resignation, which he, he denied, he turned down. We also find ourselves here by uh, um, the mayor and the attorneys, um, not threatening is the wrong word, I apologize for that, but I can't find a better word right now, uh, but discussing perhaps the length of the process uh, to certainly offer a vigorous defense, which everyone is entitled to in our system. Um, so knowing that, and knowing that we are at the brink, uh, and I, I do respectfully disagree to say that uh, we can take a step over and just investigate and step back. I think once we take that step over, we've taken that step into the, over the brink, and we have to be ready to go all the way. So I go back to my question, what are my principles? Is my principle to get Bob Ryan? No, it is not. That's politics. That is not policy. And our positions here require us to create policies. And again, my principle is to do what's best for the city. What policy is best for the city? Is it best to continue with the media circus that we have? Although, bear in mind, it's not a circus that this body as a council did not create, but the actions of Bob Ryan did. I cannot control the embarrassment that has happened to the city. I can only control the actions that I take going forward. Make no mistake, I'm very angry about finding the position where we're in right now. Um, it is angry that, I'm angry that we're in the position not by any of the actions that the council has taken, uh, but the reactions that we've had to take. Um, so if this council does decide to reject this resolution and go forward as president, I will do what I need to to proceed. But before we take that step, I do ask that the body consider, um, just consider it first to end the process that, that the mayor started with his actions in Elkhart Lake. We need to ask ourselves, what are our principles? What is our end game to reach those principles? And at what cost? I'm not talking financial cost in this case. We know, pro bono, and yes, there will be hidden costs. Uh, we know that. There will be a cost to the city. That's what I'm even talking about. Uh, I'm talking about the cost to the opportunities to move forward in this city. I echo all the, all the person's Hammond's comments that by no means do I seek to uh, forgive the actions. By no means do I seek to uh, sweep it under the rug. Um, but the cost to the city, I fear, um, in embarrassment, in media circus, in lost opportunity. We've already perhaps lost opportunity. How much more do we want to miss? I am convinced that the majority of my constituents uh, want uh, the mayor, Bob Ryan, not to be in that position anymore. But that's a political comment. That's not policy. I think the majority of those that want him removed also want this process ended. That's my phone calls. That's policy, not politics. And that's a decision that I have to look at and take. I intend to, whatever happens today, hold my head up high, that I've stuck to my principles, that I've done what I felt is best for the city in moving forward. There is no deal that I promised. There is no, um, again, letting anybody off the hook. Instead, I think it's the best to move the city forward. Again, this is not forgiveness for Bob. There is a price to pay for his actions, to his reputation. And he is paying that and will continue to pay that. Um, but in my opinion, the citizens do not need to continue to pay the heavy price. So at this point, with a heavy heart, I will support ending the process. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman President Rindfleisch. Alderman Matichek. Uh I just had a simple question of, we're saying precedents right here <coughs> with this. If, if we don't end this now, by moving ahead, will we continue? We're lucky right now to have our attorney offering pro bono, but perhaps the next time we won't have that same option. And will we owe it as precedents to look into every little complaint that comes into the city? Or should we, as a council, make a decision about the complaint moving forward or not? Thank you, Alderman Matichek. 
Board is open. Any further discussion? Alderman Van Akron once again. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I guess I would politely disagree with President Reinflesch that um, once we take this step that we are committed to going you know, all the way through with this, I don't think there's anybody that would be committed to following through with this if our attorneys after investigating this come back and say there are no grounds and no basis to move forward. Um, again, I, I go back to the fact that we're talking about ignoring complaints that citizens have brought forward without even investigating them. And I just can't see um, myself doing that. And, and I personally can't see why this body would want to do that. Again, I think we have an obligation and a duty to at least investigate these matters and to find out what we're talking about. Again, we're talking about allegations and rumors and accusations. Um, we have a duty to investigate this. And I can't see why the council would want to just ignore those complaints and to end this process before an investigation is even completed. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you. Um, first off, uh, I'd like to say uh, you know, I, I respect your opinion, but uh, you know, I think what the city, wanna, city citizens want us to do is come to a resolution that's meaningful. Um, I think um, we haven't ignored the complaints or we wouldn't be sitting here right now talking about hiring attorneys because we had to have those complaints before we could even take that step. So I don't believe we've ignored their, their complaints. But I also um, agree with Alderman Rinflush that um, at, by principle, I agree, we need to move forward. Um, there are just too many good things happening to bog this council down for another, even if it's a month, in this issue. Again, I also reiterate, I don't know if there's anything additionally we're gonna find out through an investigation that we already don't know, but now have again spent a month trying to figure all this out. Um, so again, I, I respectfully disagree that we've ignored their complaints. Um, I think we've gotten to this point because of their complaints, um, and now it's time to move forward. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Carlson. Thank you, Mayor. I've been uh, pretty clear, and I, I voted against moving forward with this um, with uh, just about every vote. And I, I think everyone's pretty much covered it for the most part, but I just wanted to word it in, in ways my brain functions. Um, winning the battle is not really the important part, it's how we're gonna come out after it. Sure, we, we, could, we could win this battle, we could re remove the mayor, but this wouldn't stop. That's not doing good for anybody. It's not doing good for you, your family, it's not gonna do any, anything good for us, and it's not gonna do anything for our city. So once again, winning the battle is not the important part, it's how we're gonna come out in the end. And that's all I got. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Carlson. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I, I too have been listening to everybody's comments, and um, my comment is that, uh, as I said, I think that the silent majority of people who, who vote us in, who have neither the time nor the inclination to run for office, expect us to do a job here. And um, this has never been an easy job, and, and this is even harder. And I think this is what we've been going through has been very sad, and it's been very difficult for everybody. It, it, it's not, it, this isn't easy, and we don't take any joy or, uh, it's not fun. It's just not fun what we're going through. However, I do believe that we need to listen to what these complaints are. Uh, we, we've got a, a, a lawyer coming to do this pro bono for us. I think we need to hear what he has to say. And uh, if there is nothing, then as Alderman Van Akron said, so be it. Then there's nothing there and we will carry on. And I think good things will happen in the city regardless. We as aldermen need to continue to do our jobs and we do them every day. So uh, that being said, uh, I think we need to go forward with this. Thank you. Thank you, Alderperson Kittleson. Board is open. Any further discussion? President Rinflesh. Uh, last comments for me on this issue. Um, I don't want anybody to think that uh, uh, it's a vote switch for me. Uh, the I, nay vote may appear switch, but it, it's always been with the same idea in mind, what's best for the city. Um, I've now been a part of asking the mayor to resign twice in a year and a half or so. 
I don't want anybody to think that it's because, you know, granting a uh, uh, absolution for all past sins. Um, but the key is, what does the future look like for the city? And that's something that I have to keep in mind. Um, say the process begins. Say our investigator uh, says there's reason to proceed. We proceed. Say there's enough cause uh, to vote for removal. First thing that has to happen is deal with any appeals process. That's going to take a while. Second thing that has to happen is we have to appoint someone to fill that mayor, uh, role. We know then in spring probably would be the appropriate time to hold an election because we want any mayor that ha doesn't have the will of the people uh, supporting that person. That would come in spring. We're then a year away from another election for a four-year term. It is possible that including Mayor Ryan, we could have four mayors within, what, 18 months, 16 months? Uh, I don't see how that improves the future of the city. Furthermore, looking forward in, in the judicial process, any judicial process, again, not an attorney, don't pretend to be one. Well, we heard something very specific when we did interview attorneys and when I've spoken to other attorneys unrelated to this case. Judicial process isn't to necessarily always find a winner and a loser but to reach some kind of settlement, some kind of compromise. Um, and one attorney had told me that it's actually very rare to go all the way through, depending on court cases, to hear you know, a final, um, you know, the peers make a final decision, that usually cases are solved in the meantime. Well, if that's the judicial process, and we're doing a quasi-judicial process, do we not owe it to ourselves to see if there's a solution available to us now before we take over that, that step over the brink? Again, everyone should know my personal feelings. Um, but that's neither here nor there at this point in time. It is my professional opinion that we need to move on from this. And there's probably going to be a cost to pay, price to pay for myself for making that statement. Um, uh, plenty of people I know are going to disagree with that statement. But it is with literally probably a decision in the last half hour I finally made uh, to make sure that we move forward with the city. I think this is the best way at this point in time. Um, so keep in mind, what does the future look like? What do you want the city to look like in the future? And uh, then whatever that vision is, take steps to get there. For me, that is to end this right now. Thank you again, President Rindfleisch. Any further comment? Okay, I have no lights here. Um, we will take a roll call vote. Uh, the question uh, at hand. An I vote will mean? Um, and I'll see. The resolution is to terminate the process. Okay, an, an I vote, vote, would, an be I to vote would terminate the process. A right. no vote would continue on. the process. That's correct. Correct? Everybody clear on that? Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? No. Koth? No. Kittleson? No. Matichek? Aye. Rindfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? No. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? No. Seven eyes, nine no's. Motion fails. Okay, we will now move to uh, 1160, which was pulled forward. Resolution by Alderman Rindfleisch authorizing the Common Council to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the council with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing and authorizing payment for said services. President Rindfleisch. I got a question. Alderman Boren, you would like this, please? Uh, thanks, Mayor. <coughs> uh, I would just as soon, I would make a motion or to, to deal with uh, 1161 first, because if 1161 is not successful, then 1160 is a moot point. So I'd move to, I'd move to uh, vote on 1161 first. Okay, we have a motion on 1161, a resolution by Alderman Rindfleisch authorizing the Common Council to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the city of Sheboygan in the role of special prosecutor with regard to a quasi-judicial hearing. I'll second that motion to pull it forward. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> on a motion to, okay. Well, they were both pulled forward, so. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 
Uh, President Rinfleisch, you're beeped in on this. Uh, thank you. Uh, I move that we put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Who, I'm sorry, who seconded it? <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second to put upon its passage under discussion. Under discussion, uh, if, you may, if I may. Please. Um, um, the attorneys, um, as per originally my request, but uh, furthermore by their recommendation, are not here this evening to answer questions. It was felt that with the previous documents on the agenda, uh, that their presence would muddy the waters uh, quite a bit. So if there are any questions, I would ask that we actually hold these over. If you wish to proceed, uh, again, neither attorney are here to answer further questions. Excuse me, Alderman Rinflesh, what did you want to do with it? I think you lost your mic. <laughs> I made no motion. Uh, I simply discussed, well, my motion was to put a resolution upon its passage. I stated, though, that the attorneys are not here for, to answer any mm -hmm. questions. If questions uh, are, are there to be had, I ask that, that someone can make a motion to hold it over to the next meeting or, or call a special meeting. Um, no. But. Uh, uh, originally is per my request, but then under further discussion by their recommendation that they do not attend based on the previous document being on the agenda. Thank you, President Rinfleisch. Alderman Board. Uh, thanks, Mayor. I don't know if it's appropriate to do it at this time, but I wanted to uh, pull forward document number 1120. Uh, that was going to be referred to the Committee of the Whole. However, depending on how 1161 comes out, I'd want to uh, not refer that to the Committee of the Whole, depending on what happens to 1161. 1120 is the uh, submitting a citizen complaint from Patrick Gillette regarding the conduct of the mayor during the August 15, 2011 meeting. Uh, if 1161 passes, <coughs> then I would ask that this not be forwarded to the Committee of the Whole and be uh, referred to the Special Prosecutor. But for the time being, I just want to pull it forward. Okay. We have a motion to pull forward 1120. Do we have a second on pulling it forward? Second. Motion and a second to pull it forward under discussion on pulling forward only. Is there anybody opposed to the document being pulled forward? All in favor of pulling forward say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. The document will be in order. Okay. Anything else, Alderman Boyd? That's it. Thank you. Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, the resolution not having the attorneys here, as Alderman um, Renflesh indicated, um, and kind of similar to the conversation about the city administrator, um, chief administrative officer, um, it would be at least my desire to be able to discuss and ask questions openly with these attorneys versus uh, um, passing a resolution to hire them before we've had a chance to discuss them. It's, you know, there's been three people that have had conversations with them. I think you know, the remaining 13 of us should have an opportunity to discuss with them and also um, ask some of the questions that have been raised by people like Alderman Riesler um, regarding some of the additional costs. So I'm going to make a motion we hold this to the next meeting or to the committee of the whole meeting on the 21st when the attorneys can be present to um, uh, ask questions. Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second to uh, hold or refer to the committee of the whole uh, due to the fact that there are no attorneys present. Correct, Alderman Ham? Either one is fine. And Okay. Um, on those issues under discussion, we have Alderman Boren again. Thank you. Uh, this comes as a big surprise to me, and being part of council leadership as chairman of the Committee of the Whole, and I can speak for myself, I can't speak for Alderman Decker, uh, this comes to, comes to a, a complete surprise to me that these attorneys are not here tonight, and I take offense to the fact that President Rinfleisch did not confer with us as council leadership, in particular Alderman Decker, he's the vice president, that these attorneys were not going to be here tonight. They were going to be here tonight and they were going to answer any questions that we, uh, that we had, uh, that, we, that we would ask. And to me, 
Uh, asking to go, for this to go back to the Committee of the Whole is nothing but a stall, and uh, I'm going to have to think twice about even putting this on the agenda for the Committee of the Whole. Let's deal with this tonight. Let's get it over. The other document, 1159, uh, failed. Let's decide tonight whether we're going to hire the attorneys. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Your Honor. I agree with Alderman Boren that um, th this is disappointing. I, I think we need to get this underway. We have discussed this at length for the, you know, over the last month. We discussed this at length in the Committee of the Whole as to what is involved in retaining these attorneys, what the costs are. We discussed at length. Um, with the council leadership, their report as to their interviews with them as well as the recommendations. Um, obviously, I think if something would come up at some point, there's nothing to say that we can't stop that process. There's nothing to say that we can't um, stop the process, which is free at this point, with retaining these attorneys. I think we need to get this moving. We have um, discussed this. We have kicked this around long enough. It is time to get this process underway. Again, we just voted down the last process to the last motion to stop this process. I, I don't want to see this stall any farther. I think, um, as everyone has stated, there is a sense of wanting to get this completed one way or the, the other, and, and I think we need to get that moving. Thank you, Alderman Van Akron. Alderman Matichek. Um, I would just simply appreciate the chance to actually get to uh, meet the attorney before we would hire the attorney. Um, and uh, perhaps during the uh, interview process, if you, they could uh, offer up uh, their estimated costs of the uh, witness fees, uh, transportations, and, and such things like that before we also um, make a decision on hiring them or not. Thank you, Alderman Matichek. President Rinfleisch? Um, going back to the uh, motion to, uh, uh, was it to? Hold or refer to the documents. E I think e you just mentioned 1161, not 1160. So I just want to point that one out as well. You might as well take 1160 as well. Mm -hmm. Alderman Hammond, please. Wow, that got kind of interesting really quick. First off, I uh, take a little offense indicating it's a stall tactic. We're about to take an unprecedented action, and you're saying on the will, on the on the word of three individuals on a council of 16, mm -hmm. we're just supposed to say okay. When, when we had the conversation about a city administrator, which we all agree is a no-brainer, that had to go back to the Committee of the Whole to be vetted and discussed at length. I think trying to ram this thing through without giving us the opportunity to discuss this with the attorneys and ask our questions is inconscionable. If you've got a vendetta, then express it, but don't try to do it at the backs of this resolution. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Alderman Hammon. Uh, I'm all for moving this back over uh, so we can all, holding this over, we've got to talk to these people. I, for one, am not about to stake everything that we're going to do, that we're planning on doing, what we're talking about doing, on this without having talked to them, getting the answers to all the questions that do need to be answered. We go forward with this, and we hired two attorneys in here, and oops, surprise, we screwed up. That's going to rest on the back of this 16 people. And that's not going to go away easily. We've already got a cloud hanging over the top of us, and to go forward without having all the questions answered on our behalf is ludicrous. We, we can't move forward on this without those questions being answered. I'm just as tired of it as everybody. I want my life back. You know, this has been one hell of a honeymoon period for me, and I want to see this done. But I'm not about to do this without having those questions answered. Thank you, Alderman Hammon. Alderman Boren. Again, uh, with no offense to the other alderman, it's time to move on. 1159 said move on, let's move on, let's hire these attorneys, and let's get it over with. Uh, it, uh, we went through the interview process, the three of us, uh, we agreed to go ahead in, in, uh, uh, in the Committee of the Whole to hire these attorneys. Uh, I think Alderman Rinfleisch laid out pretty well what the process is going to be. It's going to be pro bono for Michael Best, uh, and there is going to be a charge for the other attorney. I'll talk about that when we get to it. But the decision has been made now to move ahead with this. 
And I don't want to wait another two weeks. I don't think the city of Sheboygan wants to wait another two weeks. So let's move on, hire the lawyer, have him do his investigation, and find out what we've got. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren. Um, this is a discussion on what to do with these documents, whether to refer them or whether to act on them tonight. Um, I'm just stating, which I'm not going to affect your vote, but I think this council owes it to itself to also hear what my attorneys have to say before moving forward with this. They would have also been here tonight if attorneys were here tonight. Alderman Bourne. Thank you. Uh, I, would have, uh, I would have called a point of order had your attorneys been here tonight. Uh, it's not time to hear anything your attorneys have to say, Mayor, with all due respect. That's, that's, as far as I'm concerned, that's not on our plate right now. And I would have called a point of order and stopped the discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Boren, and they aren't here. President Rumflesh, please. Oh, I, no. Nothing? Sorry. Alderman Boren, would you like to continue? You have your light lit again. No, thank you. Any further discussion? I have no lights. Mayor. Uh, Alderman Hammond, you actually made a motion to hold and refer. Can't do both. Which would you prefer? Do you want to refer it to committee? Is that the motion you want? Um, I mean, to Alderman Bourne's point, I mean, we've had it to committee to hold. If the attorneys will be here for the next meeting, mm -hmm. I have no problem with holding it to the next meeting um, and have the, the attorneys here. To so the next council it. meeting? Correct. Okay. So that's your motion to hold to the next council meeting? Yes, that would be sooner than when Alderman Bourne could get it on the committee of the whole docket anyways. Do we have a second on that? Second. second. Motion and a second to hold to the next council meeting. Any discussion on that item, on that issue? Holding till the next council meeting. Okay, we'll take a roll call on that. An I vote will hold to the next council meeting. A no vote uh, will not, and we'll be back to discussion on the issue. And we are taking 60 and 60 and 60, correct? Did we say we were taking those together? We would want to do those. Seven. I think we were just on 61 Six, at this point. Just on 61. Okay, just on 61. Roll call, please. Hammond. Aye. Heideman. Aye. Koth. No. Kittleson. Aye. Matichuk. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. No. Van Akron. No. Vanderweel. Aye. Versi. No. Belt. No. Born. No. Carlson. Aye. Decker. No. And Hammond. Aye. Nine eyes, seven no's. Motion carries. Okay. So that is 11. 61. 61. Um, on 1160, resolution by Alderman Rinfleisch authorizing the Common Council to engage the services of special outside legal counsel to represent the council with regard to a quasi judicial hearing and authorizing payment for said services. President Rinfleisch, please. Thank you. I move that we also hold this document to the next council meeting. Second. Motion the second to hold to the next council meeting under discussion. There's no discussion. All in favor of holding, state aye. 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 Opposed? No. 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 Told of roll call, please. An aye vote will hold, a no vote will not. Heidemann. Aye. Kath? No. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? No. Van Akron? No. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? No. Belt? No. Boren? No. Carlson? Aye. Decker? No. Hammond? Aye. And Hammond? Aye. Nine to seven. Item will be held until the next council meeting. Okay. Um, we also had, uh, you wanted to pull forward 20, I believe, Alderman? Uh, uh, let's, uh, let's also hold that to the next council meeting to see what happens. Okay, that, that is now referred to the Committee of the Whole yet. Do you want it to still no, go there? No, keep it. Okay, you're little. making a motion I'm to I'm making hold. a motion to hold that also to the next council meeting, depending on what, we'll act on that, depending on what happens with 1161 at the next, next okay. meeting. Second. Very good, 1120. Uh, lies over. In a second to hold to the next council meeting. It just lies over. 
it lies over. Lies over. Oh, it lies meeting. over. Yep. Okay. It just lies over till next meeting. We can just do that, right? No vote required? Very good. Big time saver. Okay, are there any other items under discussion right now? We have 8.30 right now. Um, we will have a long meeting. Okay. Excuse me. There's somebody flashing in. Alderman Bourne. Yeah, having to, yeah, thank you, Mayor. Uh, I would like to uh, pull forward uh, 1162, 63, and 64. And uh, well, I, I don't want to make the motion myself because it's my committee, but if somebody else wants to make a motion to send those three documents to the committee of the whole rather than salary and grievances, I would appreciate it. And we'll have that discussion on the 21st. So moved. Move. Second. Motion and a second to refer those to the committee of the whole. And, and salary and grievances? Sure. Committee of the whole only. Just committee of the whole? Okay. Um, motion to scratch salary and grievances, send those to committee of the whole. The other document is also going to committee of the whole, if we recall. Just a, a Alderman Hammond, please. quick point of uh, question for Attorney McLean. Because there's job descriptions in this, can the committee of the whole approve job descriptions? Is that only salary and grievances? So if it went to the committee of the whole, could the whole thing be done through that, or would it have Probably to go back to salary and grievances? Probably have to go back to salary and grievances on job description. Um, yeah, I think our ordinances call for salary and grievance mm -hmm. to approve the uh, job descriptions. Uh, perhaps you could have <coughs> salary and grievance meet at the same time or something like that. Some more time. President Ripfleisch, did you have something on this? Yeah, I'm not sure who made the motion, who got the second between the two of us. Uh, but I would ask for them for a dual uh, referral, which of course I dislike immensely, but that way the committee of the whole can have their say, but the salary grievances can uh, do the appropriate procedure and create a document. So we will have a uh, committee of the whole first and a referral post committee of the whole to salary and grievances? I'll make that friendly amendment. If Is that, that your amendment? First. Oh. You don't even need a motion. Committee of the whole first followed by salary and grievances. Is anybody opposed to that? <laughs> Steve, does that work? Steve might be. Well, I think that's up to the committee chairman as to when they time the meetings. If mm -hmm. they want to hold the salary and grievance meeting tomorrow and they can get the notice out 24 hours in advance, I think they could do that if, uh, if it gets referred to that committee. You may just leave it as a dual referral and they can figure that out. I'll second that. Okay. We have a dual referral on that under discussion on the referral only. Alderman Sampson, did you have something on the referral? Uh, no. It Okay, we have uh, Alderman Versi. Did you have anything on referring? These could be old lights. Alderman Boren, anything on referring? Yes. <clears throat> Is it going to committee of the whole first and salaries and grievances second? I, uh, I think that would be appropriate to let us come to the salary and grievance with a clean document from all the aldermen rather than going to salary and grievance first and then we haven't had a chance to discuss it as a group. That would be my opinion. Alderman Hammond. Any comment on that? No, I have, my light's old. Okay, so we have a, uh, it's going to go to Committee of the Whole and then Salary and Grievance. No, no, no. Doesn't need anything. Oh. Doesn't need anything, it's just a Doesn't dual Doesn't need referral. a vote, does anybody disagree with it? Very well. Okay, so those three docs are done. Now um, I believe we have our the pertinent business finished at this point. Uh, it's 20 to 9. We still have a lot of issues to discuss here. I believe we made it all the way to document 1110, reports of officers 2. Uh, would anybody like to take a uh, small break here before we continue? Um, this could go on a couple more hours unless uh, the, our friends in the media would like to hear about our upcoming sewer projects. <laughs> Any, anybody? No? Okay. Um, call for a 10-minute uh, recess. We will reconvene at 10 till 10 to 9. If a person who voted to hold over the, uh, the documents having to do with hiring the attorney rather than holding it over to the next council meeting, I would be willing to put that on the Wednesday, September 14th agenda so that we could have that discussion with the attorneys next Wednesday, providing they can be here. Yeah. And then uh, after that discussion, if the council sees fit to make a recommendation, either yay or nay, on hiring the attorneys, then bring that to the council. And the 14th, I got to tell you, because I got two things that I have to do for uh, Chad Pelichek. I was also going to have an uh, update from uh, Director Amodio on uh, the budget process. 
that possibly I could put off till the 28th. I'll talk to Director Amodio, but if somebody that made that motion to hold those two documents on the attorneys over to the next council meeting, um, if they would allow me to bring those two documents to the Committee of the Whole on 914, I would appreciate it. I believe Alderman Hammond, did you make the, who made the motion? Uh, Alderman um, Rinflesh can do it. Alderman, President Rinflesh? Yeah, I move to reconsider the vote to hold it over. Second. Were you on the positive side, Joe? Yes, I was. Okay. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to reconsider the vote on holding it over. Uh, we will have to vote on that first to reconsider the vote on holding these documents. Uh, which documents are we discussing here, Alderman Bourne? Uh, that was uh, document number... 60 and 61. 60 and 61. Document 60 and 61 until um, uh, the vote would be to reconsider, first of all, holding them over until the next council meeting. That is what is under discussion right now. Alderman Raisler. Just curious, what time are you having that meeting on the 14th? Uh, it, would be the, it would be at 6.30 because it would be after public protection and safety. Okay. We, have kind of, we have negotiations on that too, so that's why I'm asking. Yes, I think Alderman Hammond mentioned that to me. That's, and I also talked to Alderperson Kittleson and she thought she would be done by Six o'clock, but to be on the safe side, 6.30. Could we make it whenever that would be done, in case she would be done early, that we can start early? Great. No, we have to post it You have to post the time. It can be later, but it can't be earlier. We do six o'clock and the whenever. I'll, I'll post it at six o'clock or after. And it's like, if it's gonna be a long meeting, I like to kind of yep. get going and. Sure, I'll, I'll post it at six or after public protection and safety. You don't, you don't like sleeping at night, do you? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, Alderperson Kittleson. Do you have a comment on that? Um, no, that's fine. That would be fine. I... Alderman Hammond? Um, my only comment would be uh, I'm a little concerned. We uh, couldn't fit the uh, city administrator conversation on the 14th because the agenda is full, and now for the attorneys, it's, it's not. Um, I'd be happy to support this. Um, however, I'd like to see the city administrator on that agenda as well, fully knowing that Alderman Bourne is the uh, chair of that committee. But I think, uh, you know, if, it, if, one, if it's too full for one, how you know, all of a sudden all this time is, is created. So uh, if Director Amodio is not going to be there, um, I don't know why we couldn't consider that at the same time and keep that process moving on as well. I don't have, I don't have a problem with that, Alderman Hammond or Mayor. Uh, it just depends on how long the older persons want to be here on their 14th. I, I want to give uh, Chad Pelichek his due on those two items, one of which could possibly be held over, but. I would rather do them on the 14th because Chad asked me that a long time ago. So if we're prepared to be here late on the 14th, I have no, no problem bringing the other ones forward on the uh, city administrator also. What do we do with that one? <laughs> yeah, we don't, it was just a friendly. If he's willing to do that, I'd be... Was that held over? That was referred to the committee of the whole, wasn't it? Right. That You're was, talking all the documents, that the was, ordinances uh, and everything? Those were referred to the committee of the whole, so it's, I guess it's my purview when we're going to have them, and I'll have That's them on right. the 14th, as long as everybody's willing to stay late on the 14th. That's right. Then we don't have to have a meeting on the 21st. Even better. <laughs> or if you don't get through it on the 14th, you can always have it again on the 21st. No, we'll go into the 15th. <laughs> I got that day off. I'm okay with that. <laughs> okay, so what's the motion, Alderman Hammond? Would you like to? I would just like to, to call the question. Well, yeah, okay. okay. And what is the what is the question? <laughs> to reconsider. Reconsider. Okay. the The question is to reconsider the vote. Hold. Reconsider holding the document. The document uh, 60 and 61 we're Correct. discussing here. Mm -hmm. Right. And I'm also going to do. Uh, uh, the, uh, what were those other documents? Uh, those were the, uh, I think, 62, 63, and 64. We're going to all do those all on the 14th. And we don't need that in the motion because it's already no. referred to you. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 60 and 61. Um, we have a motion to reconsider the vote of sending those to the next, to hold till the next council meeting. So we will do a roll call on this. Um, 
an I vote will be to reconsider. A no vote will not be to reconsider. Does everybody understand that? That's 60 and 61. Mm -hmm. If it's a no vote, they will be held till the next council meeting. If it's an I vote, we will reconsider, at which point we'll have another vote. Everybody understand? Roll call, please. Melt. Aye. I'm sorry. Bourne? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Ha Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. I'm changing your name, I don't care. <laughs> Heidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. Kittleson. Aye. Manichuk. Aye. Rinfleisch. Aye. Raisler. Aye. Sampson. Aye. Van Akron. Aye. Vanderweel. Aye. And Versi. Aye. Sixty nines. Okay, motion carries. Now we need a motion from Alderman Hammond. I I move that we refer those uh, documents in question to the committee of the whole. Second. Okay, we have a motion to refer 60 and 61 to the Committee of the Whole, um, and Alderman Boren has stated that will be on the 14th. Correct. Under discussion on that? It can be in all eyes. Think so? Yes. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? We go to the Committee of the Whole. Okay, any further discussion? Moving on. <coughs> uh, back to uh, page two of our agenda. Reports of officers two, 1110 through 1129 are all to be referred. Alderman Hammond? No, nope. just getting ready for the next one. Okay. Resolutions introduced three, 1130 by Alderman Hammond authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in several realist, real property assessment appeals and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'd ask that we suspend the rules. Second. Motion to second uh, on suspension of the rules under discussion on suspension only. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Um, the reason we need uh, to suspend the rules is uh, when these uh, requests come in, we have 20 days to respond, and um, I think they're about a week old, according to uh, City, McC City Attorney McLean, so we need to get this law firm on board so we can respond to these requests. Is there anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Please continue. Um, I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion to put the resolution upon its passage. Alderman Boren. Thank you, Mayor Ryan. <clears throat> Attorney McLean, this question is for you. In the past, uh, these types of things, uh, this, these types of matters, uh, is this going to be something that drags on for a few months before this is resolved? I'm, is this, was this the one that has to do with Walgreens, or am I thinking one in the past? Uh, yes, uh, I know we had one with Walgreens. With Walgreens and with Memorial Mall and the Blue Harbor. Uh, did that become rather costly with outside counsel in the past on those kinds of matters? Um, not too bad. Um, this, this firm, Adam Madison, is representing another a number of communities on Wal Walgreens is appealing all the property tax assessments throughout the state. I am. And uh, I think we'll get the benefit of uh, a lot of work that this firm has done uh, defending Walgreens appeals. Uh, the last time Walgreens appealed, it was just the one store that they appealed. Uh, I handled that internally, and uh, that dragged on, and we ended up doing two years, and we got a settlement uh, that was satisfactory to the city. Uh, what they're asking now is to go even beyond that, and they're asking for significant reductions in their assessment. Uh, we used Ms. Krupke most recently in the Blue Harbor condo case. Uh, we went to mediation on that and got, a, I think, a, a favorable resolution. Uh, they, she and their firm uh, are experts in this sort of work. I think uh, I, I recommend hiring them to handle, these, these are big assessments. They have they're millions of dollars difference in, they're requesting. So it ends up to be a fairly significant dollar amount on taxes. And it's not just one year. Once you reduce the assessment, it continues year after year. 
Um, if it wasn't so many of them and it wasn't so big dollars on these, I'd probably do them in-house, but I, I really think we'd be well served to have outside council uh, represent the city on these. Alderman Bourne? If I, thanks, Mayor. If I could just follow up. Uh, in this type of a in this type of a matter, Attorney McLean, if we are if the city is successful, is there a chance that with the agreement we can be reimbursed for our legal fees, or or has it happened in the past, or is or isn't it possible in this kind of a matter? Generally, if you get some resolution, the resolution is that each party takes care of their own attorney fees. Uh, I haven't seen any sort of settled sorts of cases like this where where the uh, the taxpayer agrees to pick up the, the city's attorney fees I, uh, I mean we could ask but I doubt if that's a likely outcome thank you thank you Alderman Bourne any further discussion uh, I would also make another comment uh, talk to Ms. Trupke somewhat about these already and uh, talk to Lee Grosnick especially with respect to the Walgreens, we did agree to reduce the one, I believe it was the uh, 14th and Erie one that they appealed a couple of years ago. Uh, but now I think we're to the point where we're not really looking at compromising these. Uh, I think these probably will go to hearing because uh, in our view, Walgreens is requesting a very, very low dollar figure. And uh, I think throughout the state, we're, we're on the low end of Walgreens assessments throughout the state already. And Walgreens is notorious for challenging assessments. So. Any further discussion? There is none. Roll call, please. Warren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Common? Abstain. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koff? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. And Belt? Aye. 14 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1131 by Alderman Hammond, authorizing entering into an intergovernmental cooperation agreement with the City of Plymouth for IT services. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I would also request that we bring forward document 1149 as they um, uh, relate to each other. Okay, 1149 <laughs> is a document by finance recommending authorizing into, into the same agreement with the Village of Kohler. Right. Alderman Hammond. Um, thank you. I move that the reported committee uh, for 1149 um, uh, be accepted and adopted and the two resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second. Um, it says on my notes, suspend on the uh, 1131. Yes. Do we have to suspend the rules on that? The, the 1149, you can vote. You can do it as is. You just did. But 1131, it's new. Okay. Well, then I withdraw and I... First ask that we suspend the rules on 1131. I'd still pull 1149 forward. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules on 1131. Is there any discussion or anybody opposed to suspension of the rules? Anybody like any explanations? Alderman Bourne. I'm, I don't have any objection to the, uh, <clears throat> to the suspension, but I do want, want to ask a question regarding the, uh, the IT services. Okay. Okay, if there's nobody opposed to suspending the rules, the rules are suspended. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, um, again, um, we move the reported committee be accepted and adopted for 1149, the two resolutions be put upon their passage. Second. We have a motion and a second uh, to put upon its passage 11, to accept and adopt 1149, put the resolution upon its passage and to put 1131's resolution upon its passage under discussion, Alderman <coughs> Thank you, Mayor. I'm going to ask kind of a dumb question. Uh, even though I voted for 1149 in, in finance, I believe that's one we voted on. Uh, and I guess my question is, is uh, if our IT department can be going over to Kohler, it can be going over to Plymouth to help them with IT services, does that mean that they don't have enough work to do here in Sheboygan? And are we overstaffed in that department if we can be having IT people running all over Sheboygan County 
to help other cities with their IT services. Uh, I guess you know that might be that might be a question at budget time uh, when we're looking at various departments. Uh, I guess our IT department uh, should be concerned about taking care of the I issue, uh, IT issues in the city. And uh, here we're going to Kohler and we're going to be going to Plymouth. I, I believe these are items related to the emergency That's response fine. system. Are they not? And the Spillman. Uh, Spillman. No. And Spillman, mm -hmm. which are. Uh, City County Services, um, they're instituting Spillman over there, and I believe that's why it is. I don't think it has anything to do with their other IT services. Am I correct? It's not my. It wasn't my understanding in finance that they're doing. They're going to be helping out the Village of Kohler with any IT issues, and they're going to be. We're going to be paid uh, twenty-one hundred and fifty dollars for that, and for Plymouth, we're going to be paid forty-one hundred and ninety-eight dollars. So. It may have something to do with Spillman, but it was my understanding in finance, and I did vote for it, but I'm just asking the question. Uh, apparently, they have enough time on their hands to be going to other communities, and I'm asking the question, if we under, are we under, overstaffed in IT, that they have the time to do that? I'm sure we're not overstaffed in IT. I'm sure there's a reason, and uh, it would probably be cheaper for them to hire outside rather than employ the city. Alderman Hammond, do you have any answers? Um, the, the primary purpose of this is to support the police department of both of those municipalities. Um, there, may be there may be times where they've asked or requested to do um, you know, some other types of tasks, but the primary focus is to support the police department of both Kohler and Plymouth. My understanding is... is uh, Chiefs, do you concur with that? Are you familiar with this? No? Neither is anybody else at the moment. President Rinfleisch? I think there's two issues. One is because they are connected to the system through the city. Mm -hmm. so what do the problems are through the city? But I think the other thing is some of the shared government services that we want, we can leverage what we have here and, and In, in my opinion, we've made great strides in our IT department with Dave Augustine. Um, I believe we've probably got a much better IT department right now than our, uh, our counterparts in government. No offense to the other municipalities or county. Alderman Hammond, did you have anything else? No. Nope. I think good turning. President Rinfleisch, please. Thank you. Um, just reading the recitals within the uh, agreements. Um, I think the first whereas clause pretty much spells it out. What we're looking for uh, is that support services for the hardware and software for the police department, which is connected to the city of Sheboygan's network and computer systems. Well, that tells me if, if Village of Kohler and Village, uh, City of Plymouth are operating something that's connected, uh, we probably have a very big interest in making sure that they're operating correctly, uh, including uh, antivirus uh, and other needs as well. Um, so for me, uh, having the IT department you know, make sure that our own internal system is operating correctly because the police departments are linked to our system uh, makes sense. In addition to that, we are actually, uh, it's a small amount, but we are billing them and getting revenue for the services that we put in, which in my mind is services that we're putting in to protect our own system, make sure it's operating correctly and efficiently. Uh, so I think it's a win-win for both. And if I recall through conversation, we've been providing those services in the past without getting paid for it, supporting, the, supporting these, uh, these networks. So. Steve? We entered into a similar agreement, I'd say 10 or 12 years ago, that was based on a, on a uh, per hour charge. And that agreement was not kept up to date, so it was a very low amount. And with the change in IT, the change in personnel, I don't believe, as the mayor has indicated, I don't believe that IT was even charging them. Uh, when the Spillman project came about, uh, they looked at it, and this is based on a percentage allocation, and uh, it really updates quite an old agreement that uh, has been in place uh, to provide for a percentage basis, so it, it'll be more up to date, and uh, the IT department will be billing. I, I think they, 
IT has been providing these services for several years without being charged. Thank you, Steve. Any uh, further discussion on this issue? We will uh, take them. Uh, we can't take them together. We have sure. to have two separate votes. Can we take them together? Sure. We'll take them both together. Roll call, please. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. <clears throat> Haman? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heideman? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. <clears throat> Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. And Boren? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 1132 by Alderman Hammond authorizing retaining outside legal counsel to represent the city in the matter of American Family Mutual Insurance Company against the city and authorizing payment for said services. Alderman Hammond. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Once again, I ask that uh, the rules be suspended for this document. Second. Motion and a second to suspend the rules. Under discussion on the suspension. Uh, again. We're obtaining outside legal counsel for a proceeding that is underway, so time is somewhat of the essence. Is anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended. Please continue. All right. Thank you. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Decker? Aye. <clears throat> Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Abstain. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. And Carlson? Aye. 15 ayes, one abstention. Motion carries. 1133 by Alderperson Vanderweel authorizing the appropriate city officials to submit a records retention slash disposition schedule to the state public records and forms board for approval. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I make a motion to suspend the rules. Second. A motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion on suspension of the rules. Any explanation needed? Anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? I see no lights. Rules are suspended. Please continue. I um, make a motion to um, put the resolution upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Kott? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. And Decker? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1134 lies over. 1135 will be referred to Finance and PPNS. Reports of Committee 6, 1136 by Finance recommending filing various documents. Alderman Hammond? Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I uh, move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion to second to accept and adopt under discussion. There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1137 by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Alderperson Vanderweel. I make a motion that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1138 by finance, recommending filing documents submitting the addendum to the Intergovernmental Cooperative Agreement for the allocation of costs for ongoing Spillman CAD RMS maintenance and approving the addendum. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain. One abstention from Alderman Van Akron. Got it. Opposed? Motion carries. 1139 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing a document submitting the addendum to the Intergovernmental Cooperative Agreement for the allocation of costs for ongoing Spillman CAD RMS maintenance and approving the addendum. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I'd ask that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Same. 
There is no discussion. All in favor state aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1140 by Public Protection and Safety recommending filing various documents. Alderperson Kittleson. Thank you, Mayor. I would uh, ask that the ROs all be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1141 by Public Works recommending filing documents submitting a communication from the Sheboygan Great Lakes Sports Fishermen's Club stating their concerns over the emergency ladders that are no longer accessible in the harbor as the water level has dropped. And anybody that was down for the uh, uh, dragon boat races would know. Uh, Public Works, yeah. Alderman Heideman. Thank you, Mayor. I move that the RC accept, be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. If there is, Alderman Hammond. Mm -mm. Oh, I just had somebody. Alderman Van Akron. Thank you, Mayor. I guess if I can just get some explanations as to, I, I did believe I read that some of the ladders are still accessible. And uh, also if there's any plan going forward with correcting this problem with the water level. I, I mean, I, I guess I don't expect it to um, rise anytime soon. I guess I, I would like to, to know if there's any plan going forward to correct these ladders to extend them or, or to do something with it. Alderman Heideman, please. Yes, Senator, um, we did discuss it at Public Works at this time. There wasn't any money in their budget to be able to do this. And we also felt that there were adequate safety measures already done on the docks. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Alderman Van Akron, answer your question. I guess if we can uh, ask uh, one of the members from Public Works just to discuss. Um, I, I, my question is, is there, are there currently ladders that do reach and just some of them don't reach all the way down the water or is all of the ladders uh, um, basically obsolete at this point? Bill? Um, the direct answer is, is most of the ladders are a little high to reach because they were based on water levels. Those ladders were put in when the harbor was an industrial harbor. It had sheer steel walls and it's common when you build those steel walls, you, you build some side bracing across so if somebody falls off a ship, et cetera. A uh, lot, lot different now. We've got a lot of wood piers that if you fell off you could swim to. Uh, we are a charter fishing area and a personal fishing area, which you were on your way to the lake, which I'm not sure where the ladders are. When you, when you, so, you, uh, so it's a totally different situation when the ladders were created. And, and the biggest one is several ladders you just stand up if, if you uh, were considered, you know, how you would get out of that situation because one side of the river you can literally stand up at. Uh, you might not be able to reach the ladder, but you would not be in danger of drowning. So you put those all together, and it was, it was kind of like this is a very low priority. Um, if I can expound on that just a little bit, uh, there are some ladders that do reach all the way down. Um, however, a lot of them don't. Uh, this came about, uh, I, think, I think this issue probably came about uh, the great the uh, Lakeshore weekend for kids. Uh, for some reason, across the river from the Dragon Boat races, somebody either decided or involuntarily decided to take a swim um, and uh, was hanging on the ladder but couldn't pull himself up to actually get on the ladder. And the team from Plenco in their bright black dragon boat went and saved him. Um, so it was quite the sight. Um, but, uh, you know, there's the answer is I don't think there's any plans to change anything right now. Uh, regarding standing up, by the end of next summer, you won't be able to stand up anymore, hopefully. That's the plan by, by next fall to have all of that dredged by the Corps of Engineers where we'll have 16 feet of water. It won't be that deep on the edges, but it will be deeper, hopefully, than people standing up out there. So might be an issue that needs to be looked at in the future or pray for rain one or the other. So, Okay, uh, we have a motion to accept and adopt. Any further discussion? There is none. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion no. carries. We have one no from Alderman Van Akron. Okay, 
Reports of Committees 7, 1142 by Law and Licensing, recommending approval of the proposed City of Sheboygan Records Retention Disposition Schedule. Alderperson Vanderweel. Thank you. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion. If there is none, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1143. By Law and Licensing. You might as well just stand up for a while, Alderperson right. Vanderweel. 1143 by law and licensing recommending denying beverage operators license number 8390 based upon her failure to accurately reveal all relevant convictions on the application, her record of violations related to the licensed activity, and her failure to cooperate with the committee. Alderperson Vanderweel. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Ashley Widmeyer here? She's not here. Please continue. Um, we invited her to appear before a committee two different times, and she didn't appear or contact us either of those times. Very good. Um, uh, under discussion, is there any discussion? There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Common? Aye. Hammond? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 1144 by law and licensing. Recommending denying beverage operators license number 9204 based upon a record of violations related to the licensed activity, including additional violation information provided by police at the law and licensing meeting. Alderperson Vanderweel. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt. Is Linnea Sherman here? She's not here, Your Honor. Please continue. Um, based on information from the police department that um, incidences that occurred this year, um, they recommended that we deny the license. Very good. Any further discussion? If there is none, roll call, please. Kotz? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. Matichuk? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Bercy? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1145 by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Alderperson Vanderweel. Your Honor, I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. The motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. There's no discussion. Roll call, please. We can do an all eyes on that. Oh, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1146 by Public Works recommending filing various documents regarding the 2011 bituminous resurfacing <coughs> program, also known as asphalt, and rebidding the project next year. Alderperson, the Alderman. The RC be accepted and adopted. Thank second. You. Motion and a second to accept and adopt. Under discussion? Okay, we did discuss this at Public Works. Uh, we thought some of the bids came in quite high, so we're going to look at doing it again next year. We have more money, hopefully. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, Alderman Heideman. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1147 by law and licensing recommending granting various licenses. Once again, Alder Person Vanderweel. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. We have a motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. All eyes. If there is no discussion, all in favor say aye. 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 Stain. One abstention. Alderman Boren abstained. No, Al Alderman, Alderman Versi abstained. Opposed? Motion carries. Alderman, I'm sorry, Alderman Boren, you didn't abstain, did you? No, Alderman. No, I didn't. Just Alderman, Alderman Versi. Thank you. I knew it was coming from that direction, so. Okay, 1148 by law and licensing, recommending denying pawn broker's license application number 2832, Patriot Pawn and Loan, based upon concerns regarding issues of public safety and protection and the criminal background of Cassandra Gill's business partners. Alderperson Vanderweel. Yes, Mr. Mayor. I move that the RC be accepted and adopted. Second. Motion and a second to accept and adopt under discussion. Is Cassandra Gill here? She's not here. 
Um, we, this was sent back to our committee, and this time um, Chief Demogalski was present, and he also had concerns about the business partner's um, lengthy record. So again, we voted to deny. Thank you, Alderperson Vanderweel. Alderperson Kittleson. Oh, thank you, Mayor. I, I guess I, I did want an explanation. I know the person appeared here uh, for that license, and it was sent back. So the chief was there at your committee meeting and, and uh, addressed the concerns, and, and it was decided what, that you would not give him the license based on the, the concerns regarding? Okay. I guess I, I just wondered what, you know, a little bit more about what those concerns were. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Uh, Chief, would you like to speak on that? Okay, please. Thank you. Chief Domogolski. I guess the important thing that I'd like to point out is that the person that appeared wasn't the licensee. The licensee has not appeared at, at your council meeting requesting that they even be heard on the matter. That's my concern, is that somebody is operating behind the scenes in the business rather than the licensee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Any further discussion? Alderman Sampson. Yep. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm sorry, did she show up to your meetings too? The yes, she did. She was the one applying for it, but then she wasn't the one that was actually going to be running the business. She was going to hold the license. She was holding the license. Yes. Okay, but she was showing up at your meetings? She did show up at the meetings, yes. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Sampson. Any further discussion? There is no further discussion. Roll call, please. Kittleson? Aye. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Felt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. And Koth? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 10 20, um, 1149 report of committee is already mm -hmm. uh, disposed of. Matters laid over 11 1025, RO number 141 1112 by the City Plan Commission, amending the City of Sheboygan official zoning map of the Sheboygan zoning ordinance to establish the use district classification of recently annexed property located west of Taylor Drive and north of Indiana Avenue. Alderman Sampson. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to move that the ordinance be put upon its passage and the RO be accepted and placed on file. Second. Second. Alderman Sampson, could you take the next one also? Absolutely. I have to say it again. The ordinance uh, be put upon its passage and the RO be yeah, accepted. Yeah, RO uh, 142.11.12 is dealing with... Uh, da -da -da -da. We need... Okay, can I just jump in here? Yes. We need to file both of these. Right. So it's just a motion to file both of the documents, right? right. Yeah, these okay. are. And then a yeah, motion that's to file what it is. 1026 also. Okay, thanks. So we have a motion to file 1025 and 26. There's been a small change of plans on those, I believe. Under discussion? We have a motion to file. Alderman Hammond. Thank you. Uh, what were the change of plans? Um, was, was there a second to yeah, file? Yeah, second. Thank you. I, I believe uh, 1025 and 6 is that uh, regarding Shukert mm -hmm. um, with the annexation and the voters. And Thank you. If you understand that. Got it. So this is all dealing with that. There will be others coming forward that will be revised yep, yep, a bit. I got, it. I got it. Any further discussion? That can be an all eyes. If there is none, uh, to 1025 and 26, all in favor of filing say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1066, resolution number 591112 by Alder Persons, Raisler, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, lifting the hiring freeze in order to hire a manager of human resources in the human resources department, Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. A motion in the second to put the resolution upon its passage. Under discussion, we have Alderman Boren. Thank you, uh, Mayor. Uh, the hiring of a manager of human resources, is, is does this mean we're going to go out and advertise for the position, or is Mr. Rice going to continue in the position? I'm not sure if Mr. Rice is awake or not yet. but um. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the, We are going to be advertising for this position. Um, Mr. Rice was brought on as a contractor originally for six months. Right. He's been hanging around for a couple of years now. 
uh, he's agreed it's in everybody's best interest that uh, we do hire somebody and that uh, Tom works his way out of this job. Can I just follow up? Please. Thank you. And then, uh, being that this is going to be a manager position rather than the department head, is the manager subject to the uh, residency rule? Good question, Tom. Yes. The answer is yes. Thank you. Any further discussion? No further discussion. Roll call, please. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. And Kittleson? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. 1061, General Ordinance Number 221112 by Alder Persons Raisler, Kittleson, Decker, and Sampson, amending the municipal code so as to delete the current Director of Human Resources and Labor Relations and create the job description of Manager of Human Resources in the Human Resources Department for the City of Sheboygan. Alderman Raisler. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I move that the ordinance be put upon its passage. Second. Motion and a second to put the ordinance upon its passage under discussion. There is no discussion. Roll call, please. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? Aye. Boren? Aye. Carlson? Aye. Decker? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Hammond? Aye. Heidemann? Aye. Koth? Aye. Kittleson? Aye. And Matichek? Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries. Other matters authorized by law? 11. 50, an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from the students of Oosburg Christian School requesting the honor of the council members' presence at their honor assembly of political representatives on September 26th at 2 p.m. President Renfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, first, I'd like to thank the uh, Oosburg Christian School uh, for the invitation. Um, and second of all, I'd like to make a motion to file, accept and file. Sorry. <laughs> second. Motion and a second to accept and file under discussion. There's no discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. 1151 referred to the Committee of the Whole. 1152 referred to PPNS. 1153, an RO by the city clerk submitting communication from Emanuel Lutheran Church stating that they will be gathering in Dillon Park on September 11th at 1.30 p.m for remembrance and recognizing the military, the police and fire departments, as well as EMS personnel. President Rinfleisch. Thank you, Your Honor. Um, I'd like to make a motion to accept and file. Second. So we have a motion and a second to accept and file. Under discussion? There is no discussion. All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. aye. Opposed? Motion carries. 1154 will be referred to finance. 1155, a resolution by Alderman Hammond authorizing the issuance and sale of $670,000 of general obligation promissory notes, series 2011A. Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I ask for a suspension of the rules. Second. We have a motion and a second to suspend the rules under discussion on the suspension. Um, under, under um, the, this issue is going to actually, to issue. Right. Um, so we need to suspend the rules to approve the document. Anybody opposed to the rules being suspended? Rules are suspended, please continue. Uh, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. I move the resolution be put upon its passage. Second. We have a motion and a second to put the resolution upon its passage under discussion, Alderman Hammond. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, as many of you might recall, we talked about uh, going to the state trust fund to pull dollars out for part of our capital improvements budget. In this case, these dollars are going to be used towards the funding of the restroom facilities, the various different parks. Um, we were able to get a lower cost of capital. The state trust fund, as you can see, the loan rate would have been about three, three and a quarter. All in, including um, administrative costs, we're in at 2.435. Um, I believe it's going to be saving somewhere around 20 grand or so. So again, um, Director Modio was able to uh, uh, find us a better deal on the um, funds so we have a lower cost of capital. So that's the reason you see what you have and we won't be going to the state trust fund for those dollars. Thank you, Alderman Hammond. Any further discussion? If there is no further discussion, roll call please. Matichek? Aye. Rinfleisch? Aye. Raisler? Aye. Sampson? Aye. Van Akron? Aye. Vanderweel? Aye. Versi? Aye. Belt? 
Aye. Boren. Aye. Carlson. Aye. Decker. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Hammond. Aye. Eidemann. Aye. Koth. Aye. And Kittleson. Aye. 16 ayes. Motion carries 1156 lies over, 1157 referred. 1158, a resolution by Alderman Hammond and Raisler. Oh, I believe we already, we already took 1158. That's done. Uh, 1159 is done, 60, 61, 2, 3, all 4. Them all of them are done. Other, other matters authorized by law, Attorney McLean. 1165 is an RO by the city clerk submitting various <coughs> license applications for the period ending June 30, 2012 and June 30, 2013. That will be referred to law and licensing. And 1166 is an RO by the city clerk submitting a communication from Dale Berenger requesting a waiver from the sex offender residency restrictions in order to live at 2517 Calumet Boulevard. And that will be referred to public protection and safety. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries.